Attraction and love are both completely irreverent when it comes to compatibility. This is perhaps one of the greatest injustices in life. <laughs> you know, we, when we really want a specific relationship with someone, we imagine that where there's a will, there's a way. We imagine that our mutual commitment and our mutual desire to make it work will make love triumph over all. The bottom line is we just don't want to accept incompatibility. It's not like I can really blame people because it is definitely a less romantic concept. But the thing is, if you do not accept incompatibility, you are headed straight down the road to relationship hell. Incompatibility is really not about differences. Because there are many differences that can be accommodated in a relationship. Not only that, there are many differences that can in fact make two people more compatible. Incompatibility is the condition of two things being different in a way that is specifically uncomplementary to the degree that the specific difference makes them incapable of coexisting harmoniously. Incompatibility is really about putting people with these non-harmonious differences in roles or positions with each other that require there to be either no difference or that require a difference that is actually non-harmonious to be harmonious. If you want to learn more about this in depth, I would encourage you to watch my video titled Incompatibility, A Harsh Reality in Relationships. Still, our unwillingness to accept incompatibility and our drive to find a way despite incompatibility it makes it so that by not recognizing incompatibility and not making adjustments accordingly, we're actually dooming the very relationship that we care so much about. When genuine incompatibility is present in a relationship, you can't be happy with them the way that they are. And the same goes for the reverse. They can't be happy with you the way you are. There has to be some change to you or to them or to both in order for there to be happiness or harmony in that relationship. When you will not accept incompatibility in a relationship, you will not swallow the reality of the difference. Instead, you have to find a different way of explaining the uncomplimentary difference away, then you must throw your energy into trying to change it. An overwhelming majority of the time when you will not accept incompatibility, you will do one of two things. The first thing, you will not accept that difference of theirs. Let's say that the difference in terms of boundaries is something like a thought, something a, like a feeling, something like a desire, something like a need, something like a preference, anything that uniquely defines them. That thing that represents the incompatibility, you will not accept that difference. Instead, you will try to change that difference about them. You're gonna make it bad or wrong in some way first so that you can justify telling them that they need to change it. Not only that, you're gonna convince them that it's in their best interest to change that thing. Really, this is just a cover, you see? <sighs> because at the end of the day, the real reason why you want them to change that thing is because it's in your best interest, or you think it is, because you want a specific arrangement with them and you want it to feel good, and it will only feel good if they change that thing. Two, the other thing you might try is to make yourself wrong and bad for your difference. Right? So this is where you won't accept your own difference. And because you won't accept that difference, whether it's a thought, a feeling, a preference, a need, you know, a desire, you will set about trying to change yourself. And you're going to convince yourself, that's really in my best interest that I change this. So what you should notice is that both of these things, which you're likely to do, involve making either them or you bad or wrong for that difference. Also, if we're desperate to keep a relationship together, we might notice ourselves vacillating between these two approaches. <laughs> you know who you are. But when two people do this, what ends up happening is that both people in the relationship end up feeling pain, not only because of the uncomplimentary nature of the dynamic itself, and of course the conflict that arises as a result of it, but also because they end up feeling like crap about themselves. When we send someone else the message that they need to change something about themselves, they feel bad and wrong, and thus they feel shame. 
when we send ourselves the message that we need to change something about ourselves, we feel bad and wrong, and thus we feel shame. Refusing to accept incompatibility in a relationship is a recipe for a relationship where the experience of love goes away and is replaced by mutual shame. So that you can understand how this dynamic plays out, I'm going to give you an example from real life. Rhea met Danny at a film festival two years ago. When they first met, it was like one of those fireworks moments. They spent six days in the absolute bliss of finally having found the one. By the end of those six days at that film festival, even though Danny lived in New York and Rhea lived in Los Angeles, they decided to commit to a relationship. And they've been in a long distance relationship as a result of it for the last two years. Over time, the magic of their relationship has been fading. Right now, they're really not happy together. The reason is that Rhea is ready for everything. She's ready for marriage. She's ready for kids. She wants to settle down. She really wants Danny to move to Los Angeles. After all, that's the better place to raise children. And she's already set about finding job offers for him when he comes. Danny keeps dragging his feet. I mean, really dragging his feet. Every time he has the opportunity to up and leave and finally move to LA to be with Rhea, he notices that he keeps taking projects which make it so that he can't be there. And Danny's not a stupid guy. I mean, he's noticed how much he's dragging his feet. So much so that he's now in counseling. At this point, he's going, wait, I don't understand. I really don't understand what it is. Like, I just can't. I literally just can't. I know I should move to LA and I just can't. I'm procrastinating. <laughs> the truth is, Danny doesn't want to settle down. The real truth is, is that he actually wants to be on the road a minimum of 280 days out of the year. Whenever he is at home, he starts feeling stuck. He starts feeling depressed. He starts feeling like there's no point to him being around. This is a man who thrives on the excitement and the constant change of never being in one place. Also, he's not ready for children. When Rhea catches glimpses of this incompatibility between him and her, she won't accept it. She tells herself, and Danny, of course, that the only reason Danny feels this way is because Danny's dad was always gone on the road when Danny was a kid. She genuinely believes that Danny would have to face the pain he has in the relationship with his own father and stop idolizing him. And then he would actually want to settle down just like her. And this is, of course, complicated because instead of standing solidly in his truth, which is that they're not compatible, Danny doubts himself sometimes. I mean, sometimes he's like, oh my God, I really do wonder if the reason why I can't prioritize doing this stuff is because of my dad. And he knows, I'm never going to be able to have kids if I'm not willing to ever sit put. But the thing is, is that even though he's got these concerns, even though he's got these thoughts, he never prioritizes doing anything about them. Danny just feels like crap about himself and yet continues to prioritize other things. When he's talking to Rhea, he vacillates between agreeing with her that he's messed up and needs to change, and, of course, to the opposite, telling her she just needs to back the hell off and stop pressuring him because he isn't ready yet. Rhea and Danny are in a stalemate. Neither of them know if or when their relationship will ever progress or end. When they get in fights, which happens more and more now, Rhea screams that Danny's taking the best years of her life and is keeping her on the hook and is a narcissist. And Danny yells at Rhea that she's needy and basic. Both of them will not accept the incompatibility between them. As a result, each spends their time trying to convince the other that what they want is bad and wrong. They each spend their time trying to get the other to change, and as a result, they both feel like crap about themselves and the relationship. Their refusal to accept incompatibility makes Danny feel like he's a dysfunctional, self-centered asshole and makes Rhea feel like an insecure and needy harpy. If they were to look at their incompatibility straight in the face, it is that Rhea wants to settle down, marry, and have kids. Danny wants to be on the road 280 days out of the year and does not want to settle down and does not want to have kids yet. If they accepted that reality, each of them would have to be honest with themselves about what that means for them and make decisions about what the highest and best arrangement would be for the relationship without compromise. By the way, I have to interject here. The second faulty move that people make when they see incompatibility but they will not accept that incompatibility is that they try to find a compromise. 
Now, compromise should be like a swear word in our relationships. I know that's not a popular opinion. Compromise takes you straight down the road to relationship hell. If you want to learn more about this, watch my video titled Why You Should Never Make Compromises in a Relationship. When Rhea faces reality, she sees that she just can't wait for Danny to be ready. She doesn't even have the biological time to do so if she wants kids. So she decides that the best thing for her to do is to get off the hook of waiting for Danny and to make him a friend instead of a partner. When Danny faces reality, he sees that he just isn't going to prioritize changing his current career path and how often it has him on the road. Even if he moves to LA, he will be gone most of the time. And constantly feeling like he's disappointing a woman makes him feel chronically bad about himself. So he decides that after a two-month break from contact, he wants to make Rhea a friend rather than a partner. There is a big difference between loving someone and being compatible to someone. There's a very big difference between the relationship element of a relationship and the love element of a relationship. It's completely understandable that we don't want to accept incompatibility. After all, if you accept incompatibility, there are consequences. And we don't want to face those consequences. But because of this, in our relationships, we end up being dishonest and inauthentic. We also end up often misleading the other person. And let me tell you something. That is not something that anyone can keep up for long. And I do have to do a little bit of a call out at this point. Nowhere is this refusal to accept incompatibility more prevalent than in the social circles that believe in self-help and self-development. I'm just going to beat you to the punch here and tell you that so many personal feelings, personal thoughts, personal needs, personal preferences, personal desires, behaviors, so many of them come from trauma. Now what we do in the self-help and self-development field is that we make it wrong. We basically say, if anything comes from trauma, then it's not really authentic to who you are, and so you can be healed out of it. Essentially, people in these circles tend to have this idea that if anything comes from trauma, it not only can change, it should change in order for someone to be healthy. As a result of this, I see so many people in these circles trying to heal each other into compatibility. This is just yet another refusal to accept incompatibility. Not only that, it's an attempt to justify that refusal. Because this happens so often with desires specifically, it would benefit you to watch my video titled You Can't Heal Yourself Out of a Desire. When we try to make an incompatible to us person compatible to us in some way, we go about it by making them bad or wrong for whatever uncomplimentary difference that they have. We come up with a reason why they're wrong for it and try to heal them out of that difference or try to change it so it doesn't exist. This creates shame in them and in turn they will most likely make us bad and wrong for our difference and come up with a reason why we're wrong for it and try then to heal us out of our difference or try to change it so it doesn't exist. When this is a dynamic in a relationship, the relationship, no matter how much love was there in the beginning, completely devolves. You will end up in a relationship where that underlying emotional tone is shame and resentment. And you will end up in a situation where eventually both people in the relationship feel totally unloved. It's not going to feel good in the short term. But in the long run, accepting incompatibilities is absolutely necessary if what you're wanting is to create relationships that feel good mutually instead of relationships that are based on a mutual sensation of shame. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.